Iguatemi apresenta Iguatemi Talks Fashion. Uma plataforma de ação e reflexão sobre a moda. Workshops de moda. Comportamento. Design. Negócio. Tendências. São Paulo. 20 a 22 de outubro. E bem-vindos ao segundo dia da quarta edição do Iguatemi Talks Fashion, hoje com nomes muito importantes, incluindo dois internacionais. Teremos a atriz Gwyneth Paltrow, que é empresária também, além de atriz, né? e comanda o império de wellness. E a estilista Margarita Missoni, da marca M. Missoni, que tem loja no JK Iguatemi. O evento está acontecendo de forma 100% online. Então, eu peço que vocês tenham muita calma nessa hora, caso aconteça aqueles probleminhas técnicos que a gente já está acostumada né? nesse novo formato é, virtual, porque os nossos técnicos estão aqui para garantir que tudo seja resolvido da forma mais rápida possível. E vale falar que nós temos seguido todos os protocolos recomendados pela OMS, distanciamento social, álcool gel, uso de máscara, todo mundo testado por aqui. Então, fiquem tranquilos que a gente está levando esse conteúdo para vocês de forma extremamente segura. E lembrar que a hashtag do nosso evento é hashtag Iguatemi Talks Fashion. Então, usem e abusem dela. Esse ano nós temos algumas novidades. Ao final de cada dia teremos um resumão de tudo o que acontece por aqui, de todos os painéis, feito pela jornalista Maria Prata, lá nos perfis do Instagram Iguatemi e JK Iguatemi. Uma outra novidade é que a DJ Aisha Imbiquila e a DJ Yamina Garcia prepararam uma trilha sonora especialmente para o evento que você pode ouvir durante os intervalos. E temos também uma terceira novidade, que na verdade é um presente. Vocês têm 10% off no e-commerce Iguatemi 365, usando o cupom 365TALKS. Presentão, né? Agora sim, os recados dados, e a gente está aqui pronto para começar o primeiro dia, né, o primeiro painel do dia, que é internacional. Convidamos a estilista Margarita Missoni. Margarita trabalhou como embaixadora da marca M. Missoni e como assistente da sua mãe, Angela Missoni, que é diretora criativa do grupo. Em 2010, ela se tornou diretora de acessórios da Missoni e, na sequência, assumiu M. Missoni como diretora criativa da marca. E para entrevistar uma pessoa tão importante, apesar de nova, né, super influente no mercado da moda, chamamos a diretora de redação da Vogue Brasil, Paula Merlo, que é uma simpatia em pessoa, gente. Bem-vinda, Paula. Gente, Carol, a gente está dist tá distante, mas a vontade é te abraçar, te beijar, porque não tem mulher mais elegante e cheirosa. Olha, Tô sentido daqui, tá? Obrigada, beijo. Carol. Um beijo. Oi, gente, tudo bem? Eu sou a Paula Merlo, diretora de conteúdo da Vogue. É, já estou me sentindo meio íntima da Marguerita, é a segunda vez que eu falo com ela esse ano por causa do Iguatemi, então estou bastante feliz. E quando a gente se falou pela primeira vez, é, a quarentena no Brasil estava começando, os italianos já estavam confinados há bastante tempo, ela estava me contando um pouco antes que eles vão voltar a ficar confinados. Então, hi Marguerita! How are you? I'm good. We're having just a little bit of trouble because I can't listen to you, but in a bit, I'll, I just can't hear you, but I know that it'll come back because I'll do the magic here. 
Então, a gente estava conversando um bocadinho antes sobre como eles estão voltando à quarentena e como aqui a gente continua nessa quarentena. E o nosso papo hoje é sobre criatividade. E a verdade é que acho que nunca fomos tão criativos e tivemos que ser tão criativos do que durante essa quarentena. Então, let's see if you're back. Yes? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I was just telling the people at home that we good. talked like about five months I ago. I understand. Oh, oh, great. I can understand so great. mostly. But tell me, how creative, like, how creative you were <laughs> during this quarantine? Was it the most creative time of your life? I think to be really creative, you need to get bored. You know, that's an important aspect and that's something really difficult to achieve today aside in, in the normal life that we had previous COVID because we're always in, in a fast pace, you know, and um, during the quarantine, we, we had that, we had the chance to, to get bored and hands come up with ideas and, and have the time to create. Yeah, so it was a very creative, probably the most creative time of my adult life, of my life as a mother, for sure. So what did you do with your kids that you were so creative? Because I'm trying to be creative right now with my own child, and it's very hard. <laughs> you, I find it a lot easier um, to, um, to do some sort of uh, arts and crafts with them rather than playing toys. So for me, it was ideal. I have all these boxes in my office at home filled with uh, magical materials of all sorts, from beads to papers to cuts to fabric, sewing, and I hadn't had the chance to use them in a very long time. So I pulled them all out. I brought them in our dining room and we transformed the big dining table into our activity table. And every day we'd spend a couple of hours um, creating something. We create things with, 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 you know, with all the leftover bits. That's a passion of mine. I have a hard time creating when I have too many tools at hand. I need to have a limited amount of material to come up with great ideas. So we, we would collect all the empty bottles, all of the pieces, objects that are that were broken, we would throw away and we created things with those objects. So you're very sustainable also at home. We're going to talk about sustainability yeah. and upcycling. Yeah. Um, but you were telling me before that you are probably going into another confinement soon or in Italy. How are things in Italy now? Well, um, It's hard to know uh, if we're going to another confinement or not. We certainly have tighter rules. Uh, we, uh, most countries cannot travel to Italy, but not even just to Italy. Most European countries cannot travel to other European countries and most Europeans cannot leave their countries at currently. So um, next week is school break and a lot of friends had planned uh, to travel to Italy and they can't mm -hmm. anymore. Um, we hope that um, the businesses won't close and schools won't close, but we had the first cases of COVID in schools since the beginning of the school year in September. Um, a few classes are already quarantined in different schools, so we'll have to see. So you'll probably get a little bit more creative and do some more arts and crafts. <laughs> Hopefully you won't have to, but apart okay. from doing um, arts and crafts with your kids, when, you, when we th think about Amy Missoni, how did you train and exercise your creativity during this crazy year, but thinking about Amy Missoni? Um, you know, I had a lot of time at my hands, uh, so I, 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 I'd research a lot more than, than, than I usually have time to. Um, and of course, digitally, mostly, apart from the books that I had at home. But um, I had access to the Missoni Archive online, which I spent a lot of time on. And, you know, that's the main source for M. Missoni because we'll probably go into that later, but M is based on 
the B side of the, the, the leftovers of the Missoni's history. Um, and then uh, I had, for example, Italian Vogue had, had opened up their archives for free throughout the, the, the quarantine. So uh, I took that up and I started every day I would go through an edition from the 60s and 70s. Um, and uh, yeah, really had more time, which was great. What did you learn about yourself during this period? Um, well, you start questioning everything, which is kind of dangerous as well. Um, you know, what's really, what, what is it that you really want from your life? Is it really, um, you know, a successful career or is it um, a happy life? Uh, at home, then, you know, life gets back to normal and you go back into your rhythm, but definitely there's time to think and reflect on the purpose of, of our actions and our, and our, yeah, and our life choices. Um, have you ever had like a creative block? And if it happened, what you do, what do you do when you have creative block? So, um, yeah, I probably, not really full on creative blogs, but times when I'm like, what am I going to do now? I do have, um, during those times, luckily they were not during the quarantine and I make efforts to go out and see things. So go to museums, go see new shows, go to art galleries, uh, watch old movies, which are a great source of inspiration for fashion. Also travel to new places that for me, it's always, uh, you know, the strongest source of inspiration. So make efforts to get out of your comfort, comfort zone and see new things. So you had, you had a little bit of summer, like traveling during summer. Where did you go that inspired you? We stayed in Italy this summer um, because uh, we wanted to also support Italian tourism, which was having a tough time. And so we, we rented a sailing boat and we went around the Amalfi Coast, um, which is not the most typical uh, boating holiday because you're not really sailing among little islands but um, it's it's a lot of fun because you can get off the boat a lot of times and and, and visit um, towns or visit um, museums and so we took advantage of that and uh, um, yeah it was quite inspiring I did some very interesting shopping in Positano there is a little store where they sell old stocks of jersey swimsuits and then um, we bought a lot of not not a, not a lot we bought a couple of ceramics but took a lot of photos of incredible ceramics which are a great source of inspiration for color palettes and also shape wise um, and I saw even places that I had never seen, such as Sorrento, where I'd never been, where I, I completely fell for Sorrento. I love it. And there they have a tradition of uh, cameos and engraving corals. And I saw some incredible uh, things. Actually, I got this. I don't know if you can see it. I got this oh, wow. shell. <laughs> shell. Uh, um, Ring? Yeah. Yeah, it's a shell ring. It's a shell cameo. Wow. So um, I've been to Sorrento. It's very inspiring. We'll probably see something from Emi Missoni that you were inspired in Sorrento. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, you were Who talking knows? about before the Missoni archive. And how is the past? So how does the past help you shape Emi Missoni's future? So... When I was handed over and Missoni to uh, kind of reinvent, to give an identity, I decided that uh, M. Missoni would be about the, 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 the unplayed songs in the Missoni's history. So all the B-side, all the kind of discarded parts of it. Uh, so from that moment on, M, the name, stands for 
a little piece of real Missoni, never uh, a less expensive copy of it, that we twist and turn and flip um, to create something new. So there's always a narrative uh, in what we make. Um, there's always a story you can tell about the garment. And, and so, you know, I really create from the archive because um, this brand is an extension of Missoni. It's not meant to create something from scratch, but really create a new story from something that existed and see it with different eyes and under in a, from a different angle. What do you loved more to find in the archive? What is a treasure you found in the archive and took home? Um, so all of the Missoni sport part was, was, uh, which was a brand we had in the eighties and then stopped, discontinued, uh, was a, a, a strong part of our first collection. Uh, the colors, um, it was based on primary colors and, uh, that was the color palette for our first collection. And I think it's still a very strong, um, point of view and very relevant for today. So all that part, all that uh, side of, um, of the past of Missoni was really uh, fundamental in the creation of M. You were saying that Emi Missoni is about like the B side of Missoni. What is the mm -hmm. B side for Margherita? The, the B side of Missoni? Yes, of you, of you. Oh, what's your B side? <laughs> um, my B side is probably, uh, I mean, um, now with Instagram, you have access to a lot of my sides. Um, and we have a lot of fun but, with uh, all of your sides. We love when you go dancing, no, I mean, when you see dancing. I guess, yeah, that also was quite known side of myself since my 20s, right? As I had my role of ambassador, I was uh, out and about going to parties. So that's kind of like was my main side. My B side would probably be the passion for flea markets on Sunday morning, putting on my alarm clock at seven and going, you know, and I love when people ask me, oh, wh where's that flea market? As if I'm going to the best flea market and uh, that's why I find the good things, but I go to really dodgy, provincial, small, dusty flea markets where I find good things because of my eye. <laughs> I, we want to know those secret flea markets then after, uh, a guide <laughs> to the secret flea markets of Italy. No. <sighs> Yeah. Um, Emi Missoni, which just launched a store here at JK JK Guatemi, has been about fun and sustainability. So uh, the mantra is remix, reuse, and respect, which has never been mm -hmm. more current in fashion and in life. And you are a visionary because you saw this um, some years ago and people weren't, we were starting to talk about sustainability. Can, can you kindly explain these three words and how they're worked yeah. throughout the brand? So remix, yeah. reuse, and respect. Yeah, so I like to say them in, in this order, reuse, remix, respect, because that's really the motto of M. Um, we start from reuse. And, and, and we talk about, we use these words both in a literal and in a figurative way. So we reuse, we reuse because we pick from the past. And uh, so we don't throw away. We give a new chance, we give new life uh, to both um, materials, but also to concepts and ideas. And then we remix because we don't just take those things and, and give them to you the way they were but we layer them, we twist them, we, 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 we start from there to create a new story. We um, contaminate them with, um, we contaminate them with my taste, but we contaminate them as well with a, a other um, uh, creatives that might collaborate with us. So Emisoni is not about purity, it's about contamination and inclusion. 
and then we respect because we fundamentally respect Missoni and its past and its values and we would never go against it but also we respect the planet and we respect the people through our practices so it's about a sustainable uh, and ethical um, on, on all levels approach to the work and production and uh, and um, and business growth when uh, when you started at Emi Missoni, when you started the brand also, um, how did you think about these things? So sustainability is also a part of your life. Are you sustainable at home? Um, do you reuse a lot at home? Because I think that sometimes, um, obviously, the values of your brand, which is part of your family also, is about who we are So in what we believe. So how are you sustainable at home? Yeah, so when I started the brand, I I I I didn't have any doubt about it because I thought it would make no no sense to 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 reinvent or create something new without taking sustainability into account. It had to be a pillar. It it would be completely non-relevant with the time we live in to create something that didn't take sustainability as a, a core value. Um, I. I, I kind of always had the, the uh, I, I was brought up with the, this approach of not throwing away, but transforming and um, and gifting and reusing and uh, um, and finding ways to 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 um, to give new lives. So we have a motto at Emmy Sony, which is um, Yolm Y O L M. You only live more which is, uh, you know, about exactly about this, what we're talking about. So uh, I inherited a lot of things from my grandmothers. I uh, transformed old t-shirts into, uh, my sister uh, My sister had a t collection of t-shirts when we were young where she cut and, and sewn. Um, and she was maybe 12 and she was doing all these cool t-shirts in the early 20s that like Giselle was photographed wearing and other. Uh, models from the show and, and they were all t-shirts that she just cut and sewn and transformed. So it was really part of the way we were brought up and it's still and it's still like that. And um, I learned also to let go, which is something that in my family, which is compulsive accumulator, <laughs> it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a life uh, achievement for me to let go, but I never throw away. I always consciously let go and find the right people for for whatever I'm, 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 I've decided to to give a new life to. What piece, what clothing piece you have has been around for more time in your life? Because I was looking at your Instagram and there is, um, I think, a dress that you said that every summer this dress is with you wherever you go. So what is the piece that you will not let go because it has so many stories? It's seen so many things. You know, I, 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 um, I was basically this tall when I was 12 and then I stopped growing. So I fit in most of my clothes from then. Um, and I kept a lot of them. I, not all of them, and every now and then I, I, I wish I kept more. Um, but I, I, so even if they, they, they don't look relevant for quite some time, after a while I go in my archive, I see something and I'm like, wow, that's cool, I'm gonna wear it again. Um, so I have a lot of clothes that I've owned uh, uh, for 25 years myself without inheriting it, right? But then I have clothes that I've inherited from my grandmothers, both of them, or from my mom. I imagine what's the size of your personal archive. It's huge. It's quite big, but it's my work. It's my. It's a big source for my work. I really use it a lot. Um, Amy Missoni is also about innovation. Um, there was this collection with Away to Mars, which includes a Brazilian. Mm -hmm. So Alfredo Orobio is one of the mm -hmm. designers in uh, Away to Mars. Unfortunately, the collection didn't come to Brazil, but was very innovative. Oh, and no. I will, 
It's not it's not out yet. It's not out yet. Good to know. No. I was already very sad no, that it no. had come to Brazil. Can you mm. talk a little bit more no. about how this project with Away to Mars was created? Yeah. How you thought about it? So, um, we were introduced to Away to Mars uh, by Susie Mankes. Um, and um, she introduced them to my mother and then my mother thought they uh, could be a good fit for Em. She introduced them to me and I loved the idea. It exactly embodied what we were talking about before, which is the, the remixing part in our motto. So um, taking something and twisting it, but not necessarily I'm the only one who can twist it. It's like contamination by different people and, and uh, how... Um, how modern and how of today to have a platform contaminated. So that's what we've been doing. We, we are still in the process of uh, the contamination. So um, basically we gave some inputs um, from the Missoni archive. We gave some old logos and um, we asked the users of A Way to Mars to elaborate on them. Uh, on all those submissions, I've chosen a few. And um, from these uh, chosen submissions, the users will be able now to elaborate more. And from those elaborations, I will pick and I might just approve them the way they are or I might then tweak them a bit and then they will go into production. Então, é, vou explicar em português rapidinho, o Away to Mars é uma plataforma em que os usuários dessa plataforma, eles criam as peças, então tem os guidelines da Missoni, né, da M. Missoni, olha, tem aqui os logos, esse aqui talvez são, sejam os tecidos, então as pessoas criam, a Margarita junto, do you pick together with Alfredo with Away to Mars or you pick the ones that you like the most yeah. by yourself? No, they came, I picked, but they came to, they came to Sumirago, they were, they were in the archive with me, and um, they were there when we picked. Hello? Yes. Sorry. I'm really sorry. No problem. Oh oh, sorry. One second, I did not put my phone on, <laughs> on, uh, uh, on airplane mode. We're still exactly. here. We're waiting for just you. Be, be there first. I'll just explain uh, the way to mm. Mars. Until... Okay, now I'm here. Yes. Are you here? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Can you see me and hear me? I can hear you, yes. We're just um, checking some things um, out here. But as we were talking, I was just explaining to the people at home about... So this platform, I'll just say in Portuguese. Então, os usuários fazem, eles desenham as roupas de acordo com os guidelines da M. Missoni, e aí ela escolhe ah, as peças, né, as criações que são mais interessantes, e, e aí continua com essa turma, de, né, fazendo todo esse desenvolvimento dessas peças, feitas por outras pessoas que não por ela, e que chegam nas lojas. Então, são peças feitas a muitas mãos. É, e é o que ela fala sobre a contaminação. São muitas pessoas juntas pensando uma marca. Yes, you're back. You're back. Great. Good. Um, and I was I was seeing also in your Instagram something that called my attention, which was a project with O Africa. Is that right? How I'm saying O Africa? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Can you can you just talk a little bit more because it's about also sustainability, but about social sustainability also. Yes. So, O Africa is a non-profit organization that I've been involved with since 2004. After volunteering in Ghana, I became its Italian president. Um, it's a non-profit that um, supports vulner vulnerable children and their families in Ghana. Um, I've always try to find ways um, to raise funds for them and to support the community there. So um, with Amisoni, um, we aim also to create source of um, income and, and, and labor in areas in the world where um, there is a lack of that. So um, I came across 
the Bolgatanga weaving, which is a special type of weaving they do in the, in the Bolgatanga region in the north of Ghana. And uh, I fell completely in love with it. Um, they make hats, they make bags, they make baskets. And so I decided to create two bags um, and um, that were fully made in Ghana. Not fully, sorry. The baskets were made in Ghana and then we finished them here in Italy with the, the fabric and leather pieces. And, uh, and then uh, a, a, a little part of the profits go to all Africa, but that was not the main, the main goal with this project. The main goal with this project was actually creating war jobs there. Um, a fun fact from this um, uh, collaboration is that uh, the, the, the print that it's inside on the fabric of these bags, it's a, an elaborated 1996 Missoni print. Oh, then it's a treasure. It's a jewel, this, uh, this <laughs> bag, actually. Yeah, I'm really hoping they do well so that we can do so something. They're more. already in stores there. Yes, they should be there in Iguatemi. Um, in Brazil and all over the world, the fashion industry has been rethinking its purpose and aligning some principles. How do you see the present and the future of fashion? So, I, for a long time, I felt that uh, the rules and the rhythm of the fashion world did not respond to the needs of brands or customers um, alike. And uh, I mean, I don't think that's my just my subjective personal opinion. I think that a lot of people would uh, um, would agree on that. And 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 COVID was kind of the the trigger, the last push that we needed to make that happen. Because now no one has much um time or assets to waste so we really have to use everything we have at its best um and make the best of everything and um and so you question you question uh, what's the purpose of a fashion show who do i want to communicate with through a fashion show what is the best time to reach um, the, the stores with um, our clothes? How long do the clothes need to stay on the, on the shelves uh, in order for them to have a sustainable life that um, allow us to make enough money to produce another collection? You know, um, a lot of things that we were unhappy with, but we would just let go because we could now uh, it's the time to change it so there will there will there will be a big change you know and and it's it's a very difficult time um for for everyone um but we have to really use it you know we letting this time go by without taking the chance to make a change would be the biggest mistake we have to to see why this 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 kind of see it as an opportunity. See why this came, and what it, what is it trying to tell us? And what did you listen? What did it try to tell you? Yes, I you know we haven't shown this season, and neither Missoni nor M. We decided we will show upon delivery and not upon selling to the stores. We decided that. Um, the fashion shows are whatever it is, a fashion show or a big presentation or a more interactive one that for us is the main source of communication that we have and that today the, the focus of that communication is the final customer and that it's too long the time that goes by from the old fashion show schedules to the time of delivery in stores. We decided that... Um, you know, to reduce the 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 the, the number of um, of um, clothes within each collection, and to just have 
two a year instead of four a year. Um, so yeah, we, and, and nothing is set in stone. You know, we're going with the flow and going and seeing how it moves and how it goes. But um, during COVID, we got together with a group of of designers and um, discussing all these things. That was really. Uh, a group of independent designers and that was very comforting and also very empowering and we all shared our issues and shared our ideas and uh, we came together with um, a, a proposition for the fashion world. Some of us are following it, some of us don't feel strong enough to follow it yet but or have other reason for not but um, we're calling it rewiring fashion and um, and we definitely feel the need for a change, yeah. And don't you think um, that it's more, it's less about the rules and more about getting to know your customer and who are the people who consume your brand? So probably the person who consume M are not, they don't want four shows a, a, a year or they don't need so many pushed pro products, for example. Don't you think that there exactly. are, that the, 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 the rule yeah. now applies to what your customer wants? Totally, totally. And it should have been that already before, you know. It's about, the thing is that you felt compelled, you felt you needed to uh, follow certain rules in order to be a um, relevant fashion brand, you know, because that's the way everybody did it. But there's a time where priorities change and then you're, you're really questioning who's our customer, what does he want, you know, and that's, that's very difficult now to understand. Where, why are they buying clothes? Where are they going with the clothes? What type of clothes they want? You know, definitely questioning a lot. Um, why we do this and who we do it for. Um, apart from yourself, who are the people who embody the brand? So, um, we, sorry, I, um, I like to say that M is a collection of real clothes for, um, for daily life for real people. Um, we like to make clothes for people that live their lives rather than taking it too seriously. And we like to call this, this is, we like to call this the gen, as in generation M. So the M generation is not about, it's not about an age group. It's about the way you live your life. It's about having real needs and a real life and, and living it without taking it too seriously. Well, I and, think I'm um, part of the Generation M. I think so. Great. I think so. I'm really happy to know. <laughs> and these are the people that we collaborate with, are the people that we um, uh, like to see in our clothes, that you can see on our Instagram. You know, this is when we put down the Generation M each season, if we have new ideas of people to approach. Um, yeah, you can see them on our channels. These are the people that we're um, happy to be associated with. It's all about Yom. You will, you only live more, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, we have some questions from people at home. So there are three questions. What are the main yes. differences between Missoni and M. Missoni? Yes. So Missoni um, is a created an aesthetic and each season creates something from scratch. Missoni is pure. Missoni is real fashion. M is about daily clothes M does not want to set trends but rather um, to follow needs and um, and uh, we don't create we I mean we do create we, we we don't create anything from scratch 
we take bits that existed and that were disregarded, that were kind of the leftovers, for example, as in my sweatshirt, you can see this, these are old um, pieces from the of Missoni stock fabrics, right? That we took in little bits, like M is a little piece of Missoni, and we attached them on top of a jersey sweatshirt. Whether with this fabric, Missoni would create a, a beautiful, elegant um, evening because it's lurex. If not with this, maybe daily dress with uh, um, a strong um, um, fashion forward uh, approach. Um, second, is that clear? It's super clear. It's super clear. Good. Um, what's the color trend, if there is a color trend for this collection and for the next one? Or do you think there is no oh. color trend? Every color is a trend. <laughs> I think nowadays trends are so different than they used to be back in the days. Um, everything is in trend or it's out of trend. Um, to know what's a trend, usually it's easy to say what was trend, what was trendy 20 years ago, and you're sure that that's always trendy at the time that you're asking the question. Um, but color-wise, we use so many colors that for us is really, for me, it's really difficult to identify with one. And actually, um, solid is really not part of uh, of um, of our identity. Uh, but usually when I start a color palette, I pick an artist and a specific um, a specific period of its production, of its artistic production. And, uh, and on that I base um, our color palette. Because usually, um, apart from the specific colors that then I take out from these works, um, they have within the same period, they have the same way of mixing the colors, the same rhythm, uh, even when they use different colors. Aye, that's a very good idea for decoration also. Pick an artist and see the colors, oh, yeah. right? The last question yeah. is, what do you think about Brazilian fashion? Um, I think that, um, I, you know, we're quite, we have a, Italians, Brazilians, we have a kind of a, an affinity in aesthetics, you know, we are very at ease with colors and prints and, and very at ease with, uh, we're kind of like show off you know, which I love because, you know, Missoni is quite bold. Um, I am fond of, well, Away to Mars, clearly. I am. Uh, um, I own some pieces um, by um, uh, what's her first name? Both the Ma Capeto, right? Isabella there's Capeto. A, She's from Rio. Yes. And, but also, there's her daughter, right? Chica Capeto. Yes, they're both amazing. Exacto. And I have pieces from both of them, which I love. And then my friend Alix. Um, the Vernois which I have quite a few pieces of and I love. Um, and bathing suits. Of, I always had bathing suits by Lenny and uh, by uh, Osklem and um, yeah, several brands. Oh, so this woman knows her Brazilian brands. I loved it. <laughs> Margarita, thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. And the good thing is that I am in the shopping mall. So right now I'll go downstairs and look at your store, obviously, before uh, going really back to, to the magazine that. and wrapping up. It's a up. new concept that, that I created um, since I took over M. So it's one of the first shops that has that concept. So I'm um, interested to hear what you think about it. We're waiting for you in Brazil when everything opens. We're here. Quarantined. I still. cannot wait to come. <laughs> thank Please you so much. Grazie. Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you very, very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Obrigada, Paula. Obrigada Papo muito gente. gostoso. A gente, né? ela é uma deliciosa. E o cabelo, gente? E, e o vocês cabelo? Duas, a conversa é uma coisa. Mas, gente, Carol disse que não vai cortar cabelo. Também não. vai entrar para esse time tipo, das cabeludas. Tipo a Paula agora. Exato. Adorei. <risos> Mas, ó, Papo gostoso. E é, é bacana saber que tem alguém realmente preocupado é, com essa refação, né? De refazer a moda de uma maneira é, mais sustentável. E é de Totalmente, verdade, né? Totalmente. E de verdade. Faz parte do DNA. A, a marca nasceu por isso e para isso. Então, eu sou, eu sou muito fã, gente. Muito, muito fã. Vou descer, de fato, dar uma olhada. Inspirador. Obrigada, meu amor. Bem, gente, depois desse debate maravilhoso, fiquem por aí, que daqui a pouco a gente volta às 11 horas com um painel incrível sobre liderança feminina em um time fortíssimo de mulheres. Aproveitem o intervalo para curtir a nossa playlist criada especialmente para o evento pelas DJs Aisha, Imbiquila e Amina Garcia. E também aproveitem... Aproveitem para entrar lá no e-commerce Iguatemi365, que hoje está com 10% off. É só usar o cupom 365TALKS. Até já. 11 horas.